I have a problem. I have too many Steam games in my library, and a lot of them I haven't even touched since I bought them. I say I'll play them sometime soon, I get sidetracked, and end up playing the same game over and over. It's a vicious cycle, but I'm committing to stopping that. This year, I'm going to make a concerted effort to knock out some games in my Steam library, while also giving an honest review of the game. Without further ado, let's see what the first game on the list is. Before the video begins, there will be slight spoilers for the intro case of this game. The first game I'll be reviewing is Aviary Attorney. This game is a Phoenix Wright clone, a visual novel that shows a lawyering falcon's adventure in the animal world, more specifically in 1840s France, during the revolution. It retails for $15 US, but goes on sale pretty frequently. I found this game through a random humble bundle, so that tells you this game's price really fluctuates. This game features art from the well-known caricaturist J.J. Granville, as well as music composed by Camille Saison. Does any of this matter? Yes. The music and the art fit so beautifully together that you never think the artist for this game died in 1847, and the composer died in 1921. Besides the fact that the ambiance in this game is... The gameplay is also extremely fun as well. You play as J.J. Falcon, the semi-experienced defense attorney, accompanied by your mild-mannered and potentially dim-witted assistant Sparrison. Your first case is defending an aristocrat from a murder charge, despite witnesses seeing her over the body with bloody claws. After you found all the evidence, interrogated the witnesses, made extensive logical leaps, chose the right points to cross-examine, and eventually find the man behind the job, your first defendant is cleared of the case. Except she actually did it. Without spoiling the rest of the game, I want to make it apparent that there's an immense depth to this, especially considering there are plenty of instances where if you don't get enough evidence, you will lose. There is no, we can't get to the trial until we have everything we need. No, no, no. You have a finite amount of days allotted before the trial, and each location you visit to get evidence and testimony will take a day. If you go somewhere and a person isn't able to help, or you forget something in a sequence, congrats, you just wasted a day. Hopefully you don't get your defendant killed. In seriousness, this game does a very good job of making the player understand that there is a deadline, while also not being completely sure about how to get the information needed to clear their client. With a surprisingly simple case system, your choices really might not matter at first, but trust me, life will hang in the balance eventually. I think what I enjoy so much about this game is the fact that it's very fleshed out for the small amount of time it takes to play through. Characters have unique soundtracks, some have lore that will hopefully be explored in the future, and dialogue doesn't feel forced. It's a very good feeling being able to play a game and enjoy dialogue that doesn't feel like a coked out and sleep deprived game dev which is trying to add to the gameplay time. As with the end of most review videos, time for my final score. Pog Champ out of 10 will definitely recommend and can't wait for more content to this game. I've played through three times now and each playthrough is well worth it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. It really helps me out. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.